um, I'm doing something um, quite stressful today. I'm going to meet my biological father for the first time ever. Your father? And her grandfather. <laughs> for the first, for the, yeah, and his wife Julie. For the first time in my life ever. Um, we had to be there in an hour. Sat nav is saying it'll take us 45 minutes, I think. Um, the only way I can sum it up was disastrous. I ended up walking away. That's how bad it was. Um, when I was so nervous, I was so so nervous, and uh, you will have seen us, me and Clara driving there to meet them. Um, but I was so nervous, and I remember pulling up, and I remember seeing their car, and I, it's like. You have that moment where you don't want to get out of the car, you're just like, you're rooted to your seat because it's just, oh god, I can't do this. <laughs> it's really scary. Um, and then the moment happens when they get out of their car so you know that you've got to get out of your car. I'm so glad I had Clara there with me. It's amazing how a little five-year-old can be your rock in that moment because she was my little rock and I needed her so much because it was so... Oh, the emotions and I got out of the car and they just they kind of walked towards me and Clara and I walked towards them and there was a feeling where I started to feel emotion and then I think I can't even remember if he hugged me I can't remember I think he might have hugged me and then in that moment I felt nothing I just felt nothing I really didn't and I you know I watch programs where they unite people with long lost relatives and it's all oh, 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 and I just didn't feel that I really didn't and then we went in to this restaurant and um, we sat down and it was just really strange it's just you're meeting somebody who you don't know who you've had a conflict with because of their religious beliefs and then I mean he'd written an, a message to me saying I had the Antichrist in me I mean that's not normal to say that to your long lost daughter it's, it's just something not right there so we'd had issues but you know we were there we were meeting he had his wife with him and we had the meal and it was all focused mainly on him about what he was doing, what his beliefs were, religion, his work as an exorcist. Um, it's really just bigging himself up. There was no real questions about me and Clara. It was all about him and how great he was. And what made me walk out was he was saying that he was the chosen man of God. And I'm going like this. He's the chosen man of God to do God's work and spread God's work and word. And he was telling me how, this is this will make you laugh, um, next year, next year he's going to take his work on the road to America, to India, to Africa. There's going to be crowds of people. And then his wife goes, well let's just start off with Shirley Hall, babe, alright? Now Shirley Hall is like a tiny 
like suburb of Birmingham you know she probably capacity of Shirley Hall is probably 50 people in there and you're just like you really are not with it and then he was asking can you write would you like to write my book and and then he was going I wrote to Dan Brown Dan Brown I wrote to Dan Brown to ask him if he would write my book Dan Brown author of the Da Vinci Code you wrote to him asking to you're just a, a simple man from Birmingham who doesn't really have any followers why is Dan Brown gonna write your book this is, this is the delusion of this man and then he was going on and he says don't you believe what I'm telling you about God and I said I'm not sure if I believe in God or not I keep an open mind and he just looked at me <laughs> you don't believe in God, you don't believe what your father is telling you and in that moment I thought oh my god this is like a tyrant I, I'm here, you're meeting your daughter and granddaughter for the first time and I'm being preached at you don't believe what your father is telling you I'm a man of God, I'm the chosen one and I, I he knows I, I really, it doesn't it really upsets me to hear all of this because it's just too much, it's too in your face and it's just too... I really don't like people who take religion to extremes and he takes it to extremes on another level. And, and then he was saying how he'd set up his website and um, the guy that had put his website together, it had crashed. Somebody had, no sorry, not crashed, somebody had hacked it. I think from America. Now, of course, the guy who put the website together, he has demons working within him, and that is why their site crashed. Now, can you see why I walked away and I said, I've heard enough. I, I really don't think you're well. And I said, you're just trying to look for something and find something to justify your behaviour which he hasn't, uh, you know, his past I think is darker than I could probably imagine and I think he's trying to find God later on in life because he's been very ill and that's what people do, they, they try and find something, they try and find some meaning to their life but it was, it was just too much for me and I ended up and I just said I can't listen to this anymore and I, I just walked off and they kind of followed me and then they were like, it's nice seeing you, blah, blah. And I, I didn't say the same. I just got in the car and I was so mad. I was so mad. And the relationship since that has been on, off, on, off. It's like, he keeps popping up or sending me a message. But as soon as I say something, he, he gets aggressive. He gets defensive again. And I can't have a normal relationship. And I think it's really sad. I think it's really sad that he's my only father. I'm his only child and he has to behave in that way and can't just hold a normal conversation, be reasonable and you know he's got a granddaughter as well who's going to miss out on having a grandfather um, but what can you do? So that's my experience of meeting my dad for the first time. If I, I doubt you will have had similar experiences of, of meeting your exorcist father for the first time, but you will have had experiences in meeting somebody, um, either a long lost father, mother, grandparent, sister, brother. Um, so please leave a comment, it would be lovely to hear. And um, please like this video, thumbs up. Um, so yeah, let me know.